Anita, let's bring in Carl Rowe, former Deputy White House Chief of Staff and a Fox News contributor. Carl, if, if you were to write a political script uh, to overturn Congress in November of this year in the midterms, could you write something more powerful than what's actually happening? No, absolutely not. And 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 look, let's let's put this back in context a little bit. Uh, in January of 21, when Joe Biden comes into office, the inflation rate was 1.4 percent. That's below the target set by the Federal Reserve. By April, after the passage of the American Rescue Plan, $1.9 trillion of additional spending that even Democratic economists warned might kick off inflation, the inflation rate was 4.16. Think about that. It nearly tripled in the course of four months. By July, it was 5.3 percent. By October, 5.2. It sort of moderated a little bit, but still stuck up there higher than it was at the beginning of the year. And then by January, it had grown to 7.48 percent. April, 8.25 percent. And then 8.582 percent, 40-year, 41-year high. Now, why did I mark April? I marked April because that's when President, Trump, President Biden said it was transitory. <laughs> when he dismissed the fears about this, and since then, it's nearly doubled. Uh, and so the president's, we just heard the chairman of his Council of Economic Advisors say, this all happened because of Putin. Well, Putin is, before Putin, we were at 7.48%. Mm -hmm. Putin invades Ukraine on February 24th. Are these people thinking we're dumb, or do they really believe this stuff? Because the, the, the fact's still something entirely different. And, 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 and it's worse for food in the United States, even then, more than energy. And our food prices are not being affected. We're not being affected th this past month or yeah. the months in, before by, by Ukraine. They're being affected by the general condition of inflation in the United States. You know, clearly, Carl, everything's going up, but let's put up the gas prices because that's the one that everybody sort of drives by on a regular basis. Regular gas now at 4.98 a gallon, premium 5.64, 5.75 for diesel. We just got a statement from the president on the rise in inflation. He says today's report underscores why I have made fighting inflation my top economic priority. My administration will continue to do everything we can to lower prices for the American people. What he's doing, Carl, ain't working. Well, he's not doing anything significant to reduce prices. If, if you were sitting in his place a year ago, you would have said, let's get out there and find ways that we can reduce costs and expand supply. Expand supply of energy, expand supply of food, and reduce the cost for the, the economy. And they would be looking, if they were serious about this, at things that they could do up and down the economy in order to reduce prices and increase supply. They've already missed the opportunity to do so with this year's growing season. They need to be making those decisions last November, December, and January before people started in their crops. Let me give you one concrete example. Mm -hmm. They could have said there are conservation programs to set aside less, uh, less productive farm farmland and, and compensate the farmers for not growing things. What if they said, we will allow you to uh, uh, opt out of that program briefly for a year or two in order to expand the production of things, of, of grains and, and foodstuffs on your property? Uh, they didn't do that. Get, let me give you an is issue on energy. Mm -hmm. I was talking the other day to some people who are involved in refinery business. 30 percent of our go of our gasoline and our diesel comes from small refineries. These are not tied yeah. into Texas, uh, to Exxon and the big boys. These are small, generally individual refineries in, 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 in diverse parts of the country. They have to get an offset, a, a credit mm -hmm. offset for, for their operations. The federal government under this EPA has said, not only are we are not going to exempt you, they traditionally have been given exemptions if mm -hmm. they can't find those credits. They've said, not only are we not going to give you the exemption from finding those credits, we're going to penalize you by going back for the last four years and having you cough up additional payments to the federal government. Now, that's 30 percent of our diesel, 30 percent of our gasoline. And the EPA is saying, let's make what you're doing more expensive by requiring you to go back and pay payments for the yeah. last four years. That's nutty. Almost makes you wonder if they actually do want to lower gas prices or keep them high and force this incredible transition to a green energy economy. Carl, great to see you. Right, have, a great, have, a, have a good weekend. You too, John. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.